I want to make sure that we get to your <coughs> new book as well, but I don't want to take away time for people to ask questions. So, the new book just came out literally a couple of weeks ago, right? So most people won't have read it yet. And it's, a, it's an American story in many ways, right? You're talking about five, well, you, give us a sort of brief overview of the story of the new book. So the, story, the new book is, a, is, a, is an American story that would not have happened had it not been for the reality of Palestine. It would not have happened had it not been for the relationship between the government of Israel and the, American, the government of the United States. And it's a story about the Holy Land Foundation, which was at one time the largest Muslim charity in America. They were accused of funding terrorism. Um, they were closed down by George Bush after 9-11 without due process, using an executive order. They were shut down, designated a terrorist organization, and all of their assets were frozen, and they had a lot of money in the bank because this was right after Ramadan, when Muslims uh, typically, um, you know, give zakat, give, give donations, give charity. Um, they sued the government. And they didn't think really there was going to be a problem because they did everything right. They only worked with recognized organizations that were vetted by the United States, that American and other international organizations worked with. Every penny that was donated was traced. You could find every penny, where it came from, where it went. Their taxes were filed on time. They had everything done right. And they knew they were immigrants. And they firmly knew and they firmly believed that here in America, when you do everything right, you're going to be fine. So, the government was hysterical after 9-11, that's perfectly understandable. So they sued the government, which is what we do when the government acts arbitrarily. They prepared, their lawyers prepared a serious file showing exactly, proving without any doubt <coughs> that they did everything right, that they never gave to any terrorist organizations. In fact, they only worked with recognized, credible organizations. Uh, and the government provided what's called the administrative brief, which is a um, really what the government brings in to show why they did what they did. The government's brief had some newspaper articles, uh, no statements under oath, nothing notarized, a few poorly translated statements that were sent over by the government of Israel saying that Holy Land was supporting Hamas, um, and some statements by other people that were claiming that Holy Land, the members, the, the, the people who ran the organization were members of Hamas. That's it. They went to court, and the judge dismissed the case and struck the evidence from the record, their evidence from the record. Now, the problem, that's problematic. I mean, oh, that's problematic to begin, oh, I mean, you know. But besides it being obviously problematic, there was a document in the government's brief that was sent over by the government of Israel where Hoyland Foundation's employee in Jerusalem admitted that they actually gave money to Hamas. So Hoyland's lawyers called his lawyer in Jerusalem, a very well-known civil rights attorney in Jerusalem, and she said, what are you talking about? I have all of the statements. He said, no such thing. So she sent over all of the statements. They had them translated by a notable translation firm, notarized, signed under oath, and he said exactly the opposite. He said, we have never given to any political or military organization, period. Only according to need. The right translation was struck from the, from the record. The wrong translation remained. That was in the government's file. That was the beginning. That was the moment they and their lawyers realized something was terribly wrong. Then they went to appeal, and the appellate court said, well, perhaps, perhaps the judge should not have struck the evidence from the record. However, this is not a normal case. And the lawyers are telling me this, and as they're telling me this, this was like 10 years, you know, many years after when I actually wrote about this, and steam is coming out of their ears. These are veteran lawyers that have been around for many years, have done a lot of civil rights uh, litigation. That's when they realized these men were not going to get a fair trial in this country. Being Muslims, being Palestinians, they are guilty. And they were not going to get a fair trial. 
Then the government prepared a criminal case. And the lawyers were wondering, what, where's the crime? There was no crime. How could there be a criminal case? And then the government started changing the story, said, well, they didn't give money to Hamas. They gave money to other organizations that are controlled by Hamas. They give this, they give that. I won't get into all of it because we're short on time. But basically, change the story, change the story, change the story. And the main problem was the president said one thing. The president claimed that they were funding terrorism, but there was no proof. So now prosecutors have to, have to rush and scramble to put together a case, and there was no case. It took two criminal trials. The first one was hung jury. The second one, finally, they managed to get all convictions. And today, five men, five innocent men, are in federal prison, two for 15 years, one for 20 years, and two for 65 years. And the reason I decided to write the book was because my, when I heard the story the first time, just as you heard it now, pretty much, my reaction was, first of all, it's impossible. This doesn't happen in America. And number two, if this, is what, if this was the result, they must have done something. And I thought it was incredibly important for somebody who looks like me, who comes from my background, to find out, um, investigate, and write the story so that people will know um, what actually took place. Because it was an unbelievable, undeniable miscarriage of justice of the worst kind.